What is up, people? Welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. I hope you guys had nice holidays and spent good quality time with your families. Today, we're going to take a deeper look into Sam Dickinson's game. So without further ado, let's get this started right away. First, when we take a look at the profile, he's a little youngins at 17 years old and being born in June. He's 6'3", 194 pounds, so definitely has a profile for the job and more room to grow into his body. When we take a look at the ranking, they're pretty much all in the top five or just a little bit outside of it. From number two on Making's List to seven on Smart, smart, smart Scouting, whatever it's called. By the way, I'm sure that most of you who watch these videos also like to read about Prospect, and I strongly recommend you take a look at Smart Scouting. Their scouting reports are nicely put together, and it's always nice to contrast different opinions from different writers or YouTubers or scouting services. I'm not affiliated to them in any way, shape, or form. I don't know any of their writers or anything, but their stuff is really good. I often hold like a similar opinion to this uh, Josh Tesler guy. Anyways, in my case right now, I have Dickinson at number three on Good Days and fourth on the nights that I'm watching Spooking Game and watch Berkeley Catton do Berkeley Catton things and bump him up to number two until I calm down a little bit. He's my first defenseman on the board, but I can't promise that by the end of the year, Yakimchuk won't be the first. Seems like the only defenseman in WHL who can handle Caden Lindstrom, at least physically, so who knows. By the way, if you guys are interested in the mid-season first-round rankings, let me know. I could probably put a quick one together. All right, I gotta stop talking about everything but Dickinson's now, so let's talk about him a little bit. At the time of writing these lines, he had 13 goals. 39 points in 39 games, so not too shabby. That puts him 8th in the OHL, all ages included in terms of points per game. Behind players like uh, Brustewix or Brustewix, I don't know how you say his name, who's having a ridiculous season. Uh, his own teammate, Oliver Bonk, and another 2024 draft-eligible player, and pro you probably guessed it if you follow this a little bit. Zane Perek, who's basically half a point per game over Dickinson's production. But... Dickinson does all this while being a much better defender than most of them, but more importantly, a much, much more complete and less risky player. When I filter this thing up and put defenders that are draft eligible between the age of 17 and 18 with the minimum of 15 games played in their draft year, uh, his point per game production puts him in par on par with players like Cam Fowler or Rasmus Anderson and Jamie Drysdale. While boasting a better production than other players like Pavel Mintukov, Aaron Eggblad, and Alex Pietrangelo. So overall, he's in very good company. So just like I did with forwards where I changed a few things in an effort to make things clearer for you and easier for me to put together, I'm doing the exact same thing with defensemen. Obviously, I'm going to keep the skating. There's no reason for it to go, but the rest changes quite a bit. And I'm placing the grades in order of importance for me when I evaluate a defenseman. It's not something that is set in stone because when I watch a player like Cole Hudson or Parekh, I don't go into it with the same mindset as when I watch Dickinson or Yakinchuk, for example. But in most scenarios, the grades still makes sense because I would build my team with a McAvoy, uh, a David Taze, or a Jacob Slavin before uh, Eric Carson or Evan Bouchard, for example. Defense and transition hold more weights than anything else, but skating is still at the top because skating can make or break your abilities at the NHL. You can be a top-tier zone defender with a great outlet pass, but if you can't skate to defend the rush or follow your assignments or escape pressure from four checkers, it just won't work. So everything seems pretty self-explanatory outside of intangibles. Intangibles is a bit like my overall rating of the player, including all of his abilities and his physical profile. Uh, if we would have two players with identical abilities, but one is five foot nine and the other one is six foot three, the six foot three one would have higher intangible rating. It's basically a picture of where my mind is on the player considering everything that he's got. I can't promise that it will always make sense, but it is what it is. All right, so since I spend way too much time explaining this stuff, I think you guys get it and I think you guys had the time to see the gradings I've given him. So we're just gonna jump to the clips straight up. All right, let's go. So the skating in Dickinson's case is definitely a strength. He's not necessarily a burner in terms of speed, but he can get up the ice with ease and pretty much efficiently using all the power of his leg. He has a deep knee bend and a clean recovery. He's pretty smooth in every direction and his stride doesn't really break down over time. 
He's light on his skate and fast enough for it to never really be a problem. When defending the rush, he's perfectly capable of matching the attacker's speed even against very good skaters who uses all kinds of speed manipulations and crossovers in their transition to make defenders overcome it one way so they can burn past them the other way. He also has a nice and smooth pivot, he doesn't lose any speed and it's not clunky either. He can transition from maintaining pressure on the blue line to full speed to recover after a bad pinch or a 2 on 1 situation in an instant. He's also light enough on his skate and on his feet to evade pressure and shake off a 4 checker for a clean breakout. He's not the most coast to coast guy out there but when he does it catches your attention because obviously a 6 foot 3 guy flying up the middle of the ice is always a beautiful thing to see. Overall, I would say he's more of a well-rounded skater than an exceptional skater in any facet of his skating. From east-west mobility to clean pivot on both sides, from burst of acceleration to win races for the puck to full speed ahead, I would rate pretty much every element of his skating at a strong 7 or 7.5. Before we jump to defense, if you guys are enjoying the content and feel like you want more of this, please take the time to like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and it helps the channels a lot. So like I said earlier, I think he's a better defenseman than most other highly productive player ahead of him in the OHL, but I don't think he's a spectacular defender either. For example, I think Simashev from last season is a decent cut above in terms of defending, but what Dickinson brings to the table is the completeness of the package. Everything that he does is at the minimum above average. When it comes to defending alone, he's missing something in it. I think he needs to be more assertive in his stops in the neutral zone. Even though he's perfectly capable of defending the rush and keep a tight gap, he's a bit passive for me. He doesn't necessarily, necessarily look to stop the attackers from gaining his own. Defenders who are generally more aggressive in this way are often my favorite defenders. I love defensemen who plays aggressively and don't give up their blue line easily. It's not really his game, but that's just a preference. He's still very good at bouncing on loose puck or 50-50 situation in the neutral zone. But from what I've seen, Dickinson prefers to give up the entry but trap the players on the outside using his body to either pin him on the board or use his stick to prevent passes to the middle of the ice. But overall, it's a bit inconsistent. It's missing some of that smooching players on the board or just trying to overwhelm them with his size, reach, and strength. Some nights, he's very assertive and puts all he's got to defend his zone and some nights he's trying to play baseball out there and just try to do everything with his stick instead of using his physical advantages but all of this is understandable it's pretty rare to see a 17 year old in the ohl with a strong assertive consistent defense i think it's one of the difference from defensemen from europe or, or from the chl in the shl the liga the khl etc Defense comes first with obviously some exception, but when you play against older, faster, stronger men instead of other kids, you have to develop that defensive side faster in your development. It's just a general thought. Another thing that I'm changing this year is that I will include a lot more game clips instead of just highlights. I'm not sure what is allowed and what is not allowed in terms of copyrights on YouTube. I always have a lot of game clips in my computer, but I try to get most of my clips for the videos through highlights. But it's really hard to find clips of defense and transition through highlights, right? So I'll put a lot more game clips unless I get a copyright strike like Elite Prospect got with their Anton Celaya video. With that said, I believe the transition part of Dickinson's game is his most consistent and probably one of his best attributes. You love to see that. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn clean. He's quite capable to break the puck out with a clean, firm pass or by skating it out. He uses his skating to separate from the four checkers and create space for himself to either skate or pass the puck out. He uses his eyes and his body to sell one way and execute the other. He's, he's not Lane Hudson out there, obviously, but he does include stutters in his skating fake passes, fake look, and try to deceive the defenders, orienting his hips one way and passing the other. He's also capable to introduce those misdirections at full speed and while maneuvering the pressure, the pressure, which means that more often than not, the breakout is made with precision and speed. Defense is converted into offense quickly. But he's also a very patient player with the puck. Like I said, it's not perfect, but more often than not, 
If there's no option, it won't force the play into a covered teammate and just reset while keeping the space. But sometimes it does happen, instead of just rimming it back down or resetting or clearing through the board, it forces a play and send the puck into a covered teammate. It's not ideal, but it doesn't happen often enough to be a concern in my opinion. Sometimes also, because he's patient with the puck, he's, maybe it is a little bit too much and all options are immobile instead of breaking the puck to a teammate in stride. He sometimes skate the, he skates halfway and pass to a player waiting at the blue line. Maybe it's a system thing and they want to enter the zone as a unit with close support or maybe it's him taking a sweet time i don't know but overall clean passes and clean exit are the name of his game you might think that i skipped over the intangible at this moment but i didn't it's because it's not something that i'm going to put or that i can put into clips it's intangible right it will be what i will talk about when i present the grading page in the future now I know that some people are not sold on the offense part of his game, but that's that's not me. I'm sold, okay? <laughs> you know there's players that are exciting to watch and produce a ton of offense and you can't see a bright head. Does any of this will work uh, once they reach the NHL? Players like Hudson or Zellweger comes to mind. You think it will work, but you never really seen anybody play like this before. Well, that's not the case for Dickinson. Dickinson. Dickinson, every plays that he makes... Every time he generates offense from the rush or the cycle, you've seen this play play out hundreds of times in the NHL. I'm not talking about the Makar or the Quinn use of this world that can skate circles around the whole team with the puck on a string, with some of the most elite creativity we've seen in decades, but the players that use their skills to execute simpler, effective, proven plays. The Noah Dobson, the Shea Theodore, they create a ton of offense without outskating everyone. I think... That's how I envision Dickinson's offense to become. Most likely not the point per game pace they're on, but players that create offense and chances on every rush and every time they're positioned at the blue line. I think he's more in the realm of the 45 to 55 points though. Dickinson is a smart player and he uses his brain to read the play that's in front of him and execute on it. He joins the rush as the trailer with consistency and when he's not joining as the trailer, he's joining as the driver and lead the rush. He's definitely confident in his ability to back check because he's not scared to go deep. He sometimes rushes the puck deep, passes the puck to an open teammate and posts himself in the crease with his stick down for a few seconds before getting back to his blue line. He's also very hard to pressure at the blue line. He has the handling and the mobility to open space from aggressive pressure. He really commands the offensive zone when he's posted at the top of it. He has no fear to come down on a cycle and get that defense moving so he can pass to a player posted between the circles. He's often, if not always, on the right side on a power play and he's just as accurate on the backhand. He protects the puck well while coming down and zip an accurate pass to a right shooting Altonen to the other side or in the slot. In the end, his offense comes from basically everywhere, whether it's from the rush as the trailer or the driver or even coming in with a low pad shot for a rebound or in the zone at the top of it or low in the zone attracting player on himself or double coverage for to reach teammates with laser passes. He also creates a ton of offense from a quick breakout and stretch passes behind the neutral zone pressure from the D zone. He's everywhere and he's so smart, he more often than not make the play that was needed. He doesn't settle down for making a play, he wants to make the best play possible. By the way, we haven't even talked about his shot yet and I know that he's known as a hard shooter and it's true, but I guess I just prefer when he's creating offense by reading plays and creating with his passing and his movement. He has a heavy wrister and he's pretty good at getting it through the traffic. Same with his slapper, it's hard and gets through the defense, but both would gain from getting released faster. More the slapper than the wrist shot, but he still holds onto his wrister far too long sometimes. He also cranks his slapper to the sky and would crank it higher if he could. It works in the OHL, but in the NHL, space is taken away from you much faster. Getting his stick hip level or just a little higher will prevent a ton of stick on puck deflection from his stick, uh, from his stick, from his shot. But those are pretty small details to work on when you're shooting from the blue line compared to forwards who have to shoot in traffic. So I'm not too concerned or not concerned at all, I would say. Overall, I think he's a beast and can create offense many, many, many ways. And it's all very translatable to the NHL. From his breakouts to his crease posting, he's dangerous from everywhere on the ice and he's also very diversified. In terms of physicality, 
I don't have much to add here. It's pretty much covered in the defense part of the video. He's very competitive, but he's not an overly physical player, if you get what I mean. Even if he does sometimes look to hit you into oblivion, it's not frequent, and I don't think it's the way he wants to defend anyway. He can use his body to separate the puck from the carrier or to shield the puck along the board. He uses his body again to shield the puck when there's too much pressure from the four checkers or when he's coming down from the top of the zone to the goal line to make a play, but that's about it. It's effective, it works for him, and he doesn't need to do more. We all know that he has the physical tools to box out players and play a more physical game if need be, but I'm sure that it will be coached into him by every coach going forward. And it's not like it's completely absent, it's just not a major part of his game. So there you go. In the end, I'd be surprised if he wasn't the top defender by the end of the year. Yes, some are more physical like Yakemchuk, and yes, some are more creative and can take over a game offensively like Perek or Hudson or Levshunov, but there's some big question marks defensively. And yes, some are physical freak of natures like Silayev, but offense and hockey sense in general are pretty big question marks. There's even some who are very well-rounded like him and have a mile-long track record of excellence and play above their age group like Ziv Buyam, but he doesn't have the physical tools. Dickinson has a little bit of everything and a physical profile that makes him a very, very desirable asset for any NHL team. Now, like everybody who does scouting reports, I hate player comp because I feel like every time I look back on it, I was wrong on every single one. Players are all different in their own way and too often people will take the player comp and forget about everything else that was said. But I decided I was going to give a player comp this year, so I put way too much thought into this and I didn't want to go with the usual Pietrangelo, which I'm not sure is that much of a fit anyway. But I ended up with Noah Dobson, a very good skater, minute muncher, all situation, big defender who isn't necessarily a bruiser. Joins and lead the rush, defend at a high level against top opponent. Not the most natural quarterback, but fully ca capable to do it and create offense. Seems about right. So there it is. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.